What's better than putting your friends in a cage and giving them access? Nothing. Welcome to the Axe Society in Victoria, Texas. When you think digital marketing, think ThriveFuel. Websites, social media marketing, advertising, and much more. ThriveFuel is professional digital marketing. Welcome to Meet Victoria, where we'll get to know the people, businesses, and heroes that make this community special. I'm Caleb Shaw, owner of Shaw Realty and your host. Now let's go meet Victoria. Good, buddy. Good to see you. Brother, I'm excited, man. This is a cool thing you're bringing to town. Really excited to be here. Looks like you've done some work here, man. Well, we're about a week out from opening up. Uh, a few more things are going to be done, but that's going to be a, a reveal for opening night. Um, pretty excited. Let's go throw some axes. Let's do this, man. All right, guys. Man, I'm pumped. And before we get to the actual axe throwing, yep. I want to take a minute and kind of learn a little bit about what's going on in here, man. There, there's a lot. I see you've got different kinds of axes, all these bays. Tell me a little bit about what's going on, how this all works, and, and kind of what the setup is. Absolutely. Well, this is our, our, our throwing floor, right? So this is where a lot of the, the axe throwing is going to be done, where a lot of the mingling is going to be done. And you can tell it's orchestrated in a way where we visually can kind of keep eyes on everybody. Our lane coaches will be able to monitor, help, coach. And just make sure everyone's staying safe and having fun. Because it's not like a, a free-for-all. You don't just come in that door, grab an axe, and just start. You know, going. there's a lot of misconception about that. You know, when people say, oh, you're going to have some drinks, some and food, and throwing axes. <laughs> uh, well, as far as recording, uh, there's been, like, zero injuries across the U.S. as far as uh, axe throwing to axe lanes. I think that's a good sign of the protocol and procedures and safety precautions people take and just the general knowledge of letting people know what they're walking into before they start throwing axes. What um, about married couples? Any any wives assaulting husbands with axes? I, I plan on bringing my wife up here. I just I want to make sure it's a safe environment. Caleb, it's funny you say that. There is a rule amongst the axe throwing community. No photographs are allowed on the axe throwing board. So Makes I don't know where it came from. But My, probably uh, um, we're, birth we're, from we're right there. Here. Gotcha, right gotcha. Here. Okay. So I noticed here, you know, we, we've got different type of axes. Is, is there some, some not, or, you know, talk to me about these things. Yeah. So, um, again, just like a bowling ball, you got, you know, your little eight pounders up to your 15 pounders, whatever fits you. Some people are shorter. Some people are taller. We have shorter axe handles, longer axe handles. Um, so it's really going to come into what you're comfortable with. Now, as far as specification on axes, um, no longer than 19 inches, no shorter than 12. Okay. The axe head, this is where you're going to score your points, no longer than 4 inches. And then the overall, no longer than 3 pounds. So in, that, in those restrictions, you kind of have to find what works for you. You know, I have a 12-inch axe here I like to customize. You know, we have a 19-inch axe. And then we have everything in between, wood handles, steel handles. It's really what fits your hand properly, what works for your throwing style, and uh, what do you just get your best sticks with. So there's a lot of, of uh, different options, but that's and, part of the fun of it. And these are four throwing, so you're not going to take these and go, you know, cut firewood, split wood, all these. These are designed to throw and to stick to that. That, that is a very, very good question because these are technically a throwing style axe. And if you look down the wedge of it, it's a very thin profile. And that is more conducive of throwing and sticking, where a splitting axe will have a hard V shape meant to split that right. wood. So if we look at all of these axes, they're very common as far as the, the thinness of the blade. And that's something you want to look for whenever you're choosing an axe. If you're out and about, what would be a good thrower? So yes, a nice thin profile is meant for the throwing. Gotcha. Now, so 
Say I wanted to bring my office up here, yeah. bring a group of people up here. You know, again, we got one, two, three, four base. You know, do we all, is it kind of like bowling where when I'm going, the, the, the person next to me, you know, waits and, and, and finds out or waits till I go or is it just a free-for-all? Everybody go at the same time, everybody throw at the same time. How's that kind of work out? Good question. The, the, the bigger groups is pretty easy, right? I got four bays, eight targets, and generally I like four to six people on one target. Granted, if you come in with eight people, we'll get you on two so you can have more fun as far as going back and forth, rotating your throws. But absolutely, just like anything else, if you're on this wood platform, no one should be on here unless you're throwing. The only time you should have an ax in your hand is when you're on this platform. Okay. After we throw, you throw, we go together, retrieve, and we'll talk a little more about that later. When we come back, we do not step off this platform until that axis hangs back on, then we step off, the next person comes on. And that's part of the rules as well. Absolutely. Roger that. Roger that. So I noticed, you know, as I look around here, and again, I can see all the work that went into the bays, and, and we'll go through when you, when you show me the throwing, the axis, kind of maybe the scoring and all that. Yep. But I noticed a lot of other artwork and a lot of more effort put into this place other than just the bays. When I kind right. of look around on the outside, and on the walls and stuff and all these murals, a lot of people may not know this. I, I happen to be lucky enough to know this about you. Is you are an incredible artist. Thank you. Um, I was very blessed to the, the Superman mural in my office. And my son probably has, I would argue, with anybody, the coolest room in Victoria. Because um, you I painted some so. custom murals across his bedroom walls for us. And we really love it. But tell me about these walls, man. Kind of tell me. I, I noticed that every one of them is different. I see some iconic figures. Right. Tell me a little bit about how you design, you know, what your thought process was and how you designed these walls and, and, and picked what you were going to put up there and then how you did it. You know, uh, this came about as a passion project I wanted to do years ago. Things in this world happened where it kind of stopped that. Uh, and now that after all the time that we've kind of been through, the trials and tribulations, you know, when you put a passion project together, you try to put everything you're passionate about. I love knives, I love axes, so that's a no-brainer, right? Mm -hmm. Let's do that. But like you said, on the flip side, uh, uh, I'm a trained artist. I went to school for it. I, I had gallery representation in Indianapolis when I uh, lived up there. And then also, I love doing murals and custom and uh, commission works here. So if I knew if I wanted this building, I wanted two things, awesome axe throwing lanes mm -hmm. and really tall walls, because I knew that we were going to be able to create these murals and different vignettes that people can kind of photograph with. So many times when they go to these axe throwing places, you get the picture up here by the target. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to create kind of an atmosphere where people can express and, and enjoy different aspects of it. It is a modge podge of things here. We have our Texas vignettes, uh, our superheroes, iconic things from our childhood, things we've read about in comic books. And, and there's a lot of space here we can continue to grow. The nice thing about it, if we ever want to change it, we, we, we gray it out and do something brand new over it. Uh, but it was really important to me to kind of show that side of passion as well as far as, as my art and, and, and letting other people enjoy that. That was pretty very important to me. Well, you've doing done an so. awesome job, and I, and I noticed that, that you have some that are unfinished. You think maybe right. we could take a little closer look at some of these that yeah. aren't done yet let's, and let's, see some of your work? Let's go. And then I'd love to hear the comments of things I can add to this. Oh, yeah. You know everybody's going to have an opinion on because it. Because no, make, make no mistake about it, Caleb. That's Superman up there. That's for you, buddy. I, brother, <laughs> I appreciate you, Dad. Let's go check it out. All right, man. So I wanted to get up close and personal with these things. Yep. Like I said, I'm a big fan of your work. I always have been, all the way from Holy Grail Jiu-Jitsu to my son's room to my office to now this. And, and once again, you have not failed to impress. Well done. Um, Thank you. For those that don't know, talk a little bit about, you know, I see you're starting to put a, a, a new uh, picture right here, a new drawing. What is your process? Kind of how do you, do you, is this a one-day thing? Is it a five-minute deal? Does this take two weeks? Kind of how does it go through... When, when you want to put a new character up like this, and you, what's kind of the process on that? Uh, well, it, it definitely is a labor of love for sure. Because as fast as I want it to come alive in, its, in the artistic sense, it usually takes 10 times longer, right? So the idea of what I wanted on here by this point maybe uh, is not as grand. But the beautiful part about it is we have time to continue to grow and change up. I, what I know we wanted for sure is just iconic characters from past, present, and, uh, and an axe being a theme in all of their hand. And sometimes even if they don't fit, you know, such as your Supermans and uh, Abraham Lincoln over there. <laughs> but, but you uh, made it work, man. You made it work. That's the cool thing. You know, I try to stay with the primary 
uh, monochromatic color scheme to kind of have it all tied together. Uh, but it was just things that were like were important to me as a kid. You know, we have our He-Mans and, and Supermans and Power Rangers and, and different comic book characters and even little fun kid characters like Adventure Time there with Finn and Jake. And as we continue to grow, uh, what I'd like to tailor here is, is all demographics, right? I, I want you know, kids from 12 and up, I like adolescent kids from 16 and 18 to have their birthday parties here, you know, work retreat parties, mm -hmm. and then just a good walk-in self-stress-reducing uh, self kind of uh, process. And I like to have all the art reflect that, right? So, you know, we have stuff kind of from all generations, um, and there may be things they don't even know they like until they see it. But the idea is to have a really cool photo that they can share with as well. Well, and you know, in the selfie generation too, while I'm exactly. over here, I can get these cool Superman backgrounds. That's and right. Shots That's and, right. And, and I guarantee you, nobody else has any artwork like this because this is just pure custom and, and pure you, man. And Thank so, you. well done on this. And you know, I've, I've stalled talking about your masterpieces here as long as I can. And I, I think we're about to that time where. I'm ready to light this board up and, and probably hit some, do some, some bullseye hitting here. You pull all the energy from all this artwork. You see all the, the, the greats before us of Superman and He-Man. I think I'm going to earn my spot. You're going to have to put me right there. I'm going to have to, right coming. there. It's going to be so spectacular that you're going to have a big, giant Caleb Shaw on your wall right there. I expected there. nothing less from you, Caleb. You're going to nail this, and it's going to be fun. Let's go do this. Do it. Tired of dirty, smelly, pest-ridden trash cans and dumpsters? At Third Coast Sanitation, we know how to fix the problem. Our hot water system reaches over 200 degrees to kill bacteria and germs. It's great for families who want to ensure a clean living environment while keeping smells at bay and detracting varmint from your home. Our truck comes equipped with the water and solution and empties all dirty remnants into the dump tank we take with us. We are a fully insured and educated team excited to bring our services to the community we were raised in and are proud to call the Crossroads area home. All right, guys, we are back, and it is that night. It's time now. No more excuses. No more looking at the art and the murals. It's time to throw some axes. So on that note, my brother, I know there's a lot more to it than just walking up, grabbing one of these things, and just rapid fire throwing it as hard as you can. A little bit, a couple different types of throws you can make, a few of those. Yep. Let me step, why don't you take this spot, I'll step over here and tell me about a few of these throws, walk me through a couple different ways, you know, throwing this thing and, and, and then set the example, make it look good for us. And I wish it was all that easy, grab an axe, throw it and it sticks. But like anything else, it's always a little more difficult in life. So we try to make it as easy, easy as possible. So we talked about when you approach the floor, that's, that's the time you're able to grab an axe. When we grab our axe off, no one else should be on the floor. Instead of the, the, the person throwing with you, you'll throw together. Since it's just us here, uh, we approach the floor and we look at the ground. And the ground, we have four lines separated about 12 inches. And like anything else, the, the distance of this axe that we talked about earlier will depend how you step. So if I'm over rotating, I'll step back. If I'm under rotating, I step forward. Um, and I wish, there, Caleb, there was a mathematical equation I could give you to hit a bullseye first time, but it's not. And one of the things you did mention on, on the rotation that I found interesting is yep. it's, it's basically one rotation, plus or minus a little bit. It's Correct. not lining up and flip that thing five right. times before it gets there. It's, it's one rotation. In the movies. The distance is important. In the movies, it makes you feel like it's thrown this way, but it's not. Like you said, it's one rotation and stick. So knowing that, it's all about judging our footing to see where our best stick is for that. Again, when we change to a bigger axe, it changes everything up. And that's where the game aspect of it comes in. But, and depending uh, on a person's you know, body type and all that kind of yep. stuff, it, it may, the different throwing types may be more applicable, whether one-handed or two-handed, which you're going to show us both. But depending, you know, each person may find more comfort in a different type of throw. There's not correct. one universal across for everybody. That is correct. And what works for me in the beginning of the day after an hour, I'm fatigued. It may not work then. So again, you always have to adjust into your throws and your footing and the target itself. Gotcha. Well, I'm going to step back to follow the safety protocols here. Yep. And why don't you walk us through the two-handed and a one-handed throw and kind of show us how this goes a little bit, and then I'll step up and see if I can't beat you at it. No pressure. But let's have this. Let's do All it, right. man. 
So like we talked about, I'm going to grab my, my trusty old axe here. And you look pretty smooth just pulling that out from your back, too. That, that was pretty I nice. saw it on, Mohicans right I saw there. it on a movie. It looked cool. I'm going <laughs> to take it. Cool here too, bro. I'm going to take it. Well played. It. Well played. Uh, knowing my footing here, I've done this a few times. I know with this particular axe, I'm about a half foot on my front line. So what I do generally is I grab it in my dominant hand, my non-dominant hand over the top. And again, it's not a strength thing. It, yeah, it's fun to look, throwing really hard and sticking it. But if you see the competitions they have, um, it's really more precision than anything else. So we're going to try to split the difference between the two. So what I do is I put my half foot on one end, my dominant hand over the other, straight over my head so I have a good line of sight. I raise up, throw, and release. Perfect. All right. All right. Yes, sir. That's so, always the, the, the way you want to do it, too, is on camera, your first throw bullseye every time. Well, we won't tell them this is our 73rd yeah, yeah, to try. Okay, first okay. take, first take. First yeah, take, first take. First one. Now, yeah. on the split end, when we retrieve it, it's not left and right. It's one motion, up and down. Now, okay. it looks like it kind of barely stuck in there, but if it gets in deep, up and down, not left and right, saves the wood, saves yeah, the axe. Yeah, makes sense. So we'll go right up here, grab it come up and you're out. Roger that. Again. And that was the two-handed throw you just hit a bullseye with. Correct. Oh, I guess you want me to try a one-handed so, oh, throw. Yes, okay. Will, and you've got to hit a bullseye <laughs> now too since you did it on the two-hander. I, I will. And if I miss, it's my fault. it was for educational purposes. And, exactly. Okay. You got to show what happens when you do miss. So over the head, same concept. My dominant hand over my head, line of sight. You know what? That was the woods' fault. You, you nailed that. It just it, it was too pretty and it didn't accept it. That's fair enough. It fair enough. I'll take that. But again, same concept. Uh, there would be no points for that one. And now on the game aspect of it, generally it's five throws, five throws, and then there's clutch shots in there on your fifth and tenth shot. Hence the two little eight pointers at the top. Uh, you can do the the, the legal uh, game that they have at League Four. Or sometimes you just want to go up there and just throw for numbers and add them up. Gotcha. Again, when you come here, there's no specific game you have to play. It's just you go, you throw an axe, and if you want to get a little more competitive with it, we can, uh, you, you can create I'll the games what, as we go. Why don't we, uh, let's see if I can get a couple of these throws down. Absolutely. And then maybe we'll play a real quick game and, and see who comes out on top. Let's do it. Let's do it, brother. It's my turn now. We're going to go with the old, we'll start with the two-handed one. That's right. Um, dominant hand, which was my right hand. You said that's on the, the non-dominant. We'll go over it. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to put my foot about halfway on the line and match what you did there. Come back over the head. One motion. Yeah. I'll take that for a start. Hey, we'll take that it. That was my two-handed, and then come <laughs> up with it. Yes, sir. Like that? That's Good it. Good deal. All right. <laughs> That works for me. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go with the one-handed, kind of the same type deal. And remember, if you same. make this, it was because of amazing coaching. <laughs> that's it. That's all they were. Okay. Of course. Just making sure. So, same type deal. Bring it back over the head. Bam. Not the bullseye, but I'll take it. <laughs> that's right. All right, so we know the two-handed one. Yes, sir. Got it out correctly. We did the one-handed. Got it out correctly. I think we should play a quick little game. What do you think? Let's do it. So, let's get this competition started. I will lead off with the first throw. Low. Four. All right, here we go. Got the axe, got the style, got the focus. Not, not a bad start. I mean, I suppose. You know, I feel like I should start with a handicap or something, or you should. I don't know how the golf thing works. I feel it. Not a bullseye. There you go. Hey, that'll work. <laughs> So that one would be four? Four. Four. Go back. Bam. So does that mean since you missed that, I win? Uh, that that I means win. that through five, we are pretty close. That's right. <laughs> Hang on. What Hang on. Uh, dude. Mm. All right. Uh. Oh, Man, so close. close, so close. Know our distance, get a firm grip over the axe, hand over the top, above the head. Six, angled. 
40 to 17. I think it's a tie. We'll have to recount it. That was a a clear tie. (laughs) (laughs) On that note, well done, my friend. We, um, I got my butt kicked. It happened. Good throwing. Thanks for the, that was a ton of fun, man. Thank you. uh, I appreciate all the instruction and stuff. Why don't we sit down and have an interview? Let's kind of see how this all came together and how how it happened. But that was fun. And thanks, man. I enjoyed that. Did a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be right back. Welcome to Furniture Warehouse Direct. I've got lots of furniture that we've just set back out. If you're needing something right away, come into the store, check it out. You can take right off the floor. We have Simmons Beautyrest, Simmons Hybrid, and we have Simmons Beautyrest Black. Our selection of bedroom sets right now, solid wood. We have some with self-closing drawers. We still carry a little bit of everything. We're budget friendly for every budget. We have financing options. We have leasing options. Check us out at FurnitureWarehouseDirect.com. And we're at 2110 John Stockbauer in Victoria, Texas. All right, guys, welcome back. Man, it has been a blast today. Had a ton of fun. I got my butt straight up kicked in the in the game. I mean, got my butt kicked. The man, I, I mean, he had home court advantage, but even with that, I just I straight up got my butt kicked. But it was a ton of fun, even in defeat, and, and just I enjoyed that. I'm coming right back, bringing the wifey, bringing the office, doing the whole thing. But on that note, I wanted to just sit down and talk to you guys a little bit. And for the ones that didn't know you, if you wouldn't mind, please introduce yourselves. Uh, again, Zachary Lopez, my beautiful wife Jennifer Lopez, uh, as well. We've actually been very local to the area. We grew up together, met in fourth grade in Palacios, Texas. Went out of state for a little bit. And we've been back for about ten years or so. Um, you know, we have an eighteen-year-old, we have a ten-year-old, and of course, they love to throw as well. Uh, so it's really been kind of like a family event for us. Um, it kind of started. We had again, we're not recreating the wheel. Axe throwing has been around for a while. But it just hasn't hit the Victoria area. You know, we have an axe throwing target in our backyard that where most families go and throw the ball with each other or, or go for walks or the baseball or football. We grabbed axes and we threw them in our backyard. And, and it's really something that, you know, what was fun and, and really cool in the beginning became games and kind of led us and the catalyst to kind of where we are today with this. Uh, very family driven and, and something that we saw, it, it kind of brought us together a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, every time we went out, we visited other places. The atmosphere it created, the people who walked in who wasn't sure they wanted to throw, within the hour they were hitting double bullseyes. So it was very contagious, and that was something that we wanted to bring to Victoria because, you know, locally owned businesses and events and things to do in this town is very important to us. You know, you, we talk about this all the time. You know, I think a lot of people leave town over the weekends because there's just not too many things to do or new things to do here. So we really wanted to create an atmosphere where, where people can come have a great time with their friends and family. But again, if you look in here, probably no more than 50 people can be in here. Mm-hmm. So by default, if you're hitting a bullseye down there and I'm hitting one down here, we're all going to... Everybody's going to know that com- fun, friendly competitiveness that Absolutely. Builds. You know, and it, it's been, you know, the last couple of years has been a trying time for, for the... the uh, for everybody, and I, I think this is kind of a small step to kind of getting everybody back a little bit uh, and, and, and communicate and mingling and just having a really good time for sure. Well, that was one of my big questions is, you know, is what made you guys decide to open an axe throwing thing, you right. know, and, and I agree that Victoria could definitely right. use someplace like this, and I think you guys are going to do spectacular. How was that process, you know, when you decided, okay, let's let's do this, we're going to make an axe place. You guys just call somebody up, hey, man, go deck this out, and, and we'll talk to you in a few weeks, and y'all just stayed home, watched some TV, enjoyed life, nights, or did y'all maybe put in just a little bit of sweat equity up here? Well, the, again, I'll let you <laughs> talk on this, because I'm sure you have a lot to say, but the plan was to get a crew, hire everybody who needs to be done turnkey, but the reality and the financial reality of it all is everything was done by me and Jennifer here. Uh, I mean, I'm sure she can tell you some great stories. I had a few friends who helped us uh, on a day or two, um, but 95% of every wall constructed, every painting touched, was done by me and my wife. I don't know. Did you have a... He was bragging before you got here. He, that was one of the things that, that you could just see it in his eyes and how excited he was. Is he was bragging and, and excited about the fact that he got to do this with you. And, and he's like, these walls went up because my wife helped me put these walls up. And... and what was your thoughts on this? You know, when, when the whole, hey, it's time to build an axe thing. Are you crazy? Or was it like, hey, let's go, let's do this. And, and I can't wait to get and spend all my evenings over here hanging walls and wood and drawings. And what, what were your thoughts? Well, it's funny you say, are you crazy? Because you have to know my husband to know that this is not, 
this is not anywhere near the realm of like being strange at our house. Mm -hmm. So uh, we tried axe throwing a long time ago, like with some friends, and just found that we had a really good time. Um, I was afraid at first, but then, you know, you look at it and you feel like I'm an educated person. I can get this, and you keep throwing and you can't get it, and you're like, <laughs> and then you finally get the bullseye. It really does feel good, and you have such a good time. Um, and, we, and since then, we've been to a lot of other axe places, and like you said, Victoria. Sometimes we leave on the weekends because there wasn't things to do. And now that I've been really looking around, there's so many things to keep us here. Um, we went out the other day in town, and I had, and I'm not somebody who goes out very often, but I was like, this is really nice. Like, you know, they have other places to go, listen to live music, and um, for us, like, we would be doing this at home. We'd be mm -hmm. in our backyard, and um, um, something for the neighbors. We're trying to get out of the, <laughs> of the so that they don't hear that late at night. Or but um, bump, you know, yeah, and <laughs> throwing axes in your backyard. Within the chair, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, I had some friends from work over, and my and my girlfriends. Um, we just had, we were just sitting there talking, throwing axes. You know, ten o'clock and ten eleven o'clock at night, and it was just really nice. And I felt like it's something it's something that we should have done a lot more. And I think that um, we want to offer that to a lot of other companies, or a lot of other teens, um, parents, and kids. Um, my kid waits every day for Zach to come home. He's like, can we go throw axes? And so he's gotten really good. And actually, last year, he um, contributed a, a virtual uh, talent show entry. And so he threw axes nice. for Shalomer. So yeah, Did he win? I don't know if it's sure, like that. Right, but anyway, just like, huh? It's kind of like everybody features a virtual talent show. Um, but as far as building everything, I feel like so much of our life together has like led up to this point. Whether mm -hmm. it's like you doing little home projects together or like helping with murals in the past, um, like axes, we have, you know, axes and knives all over the place at the house. So it's just like, we are always doing projects. We're always tinkering in the house. And I was like, why don't we take that time and do something really big? Well, know? I can say as somebody that's a fan of, of your work that, you know, I've always gone these places that, that your master, You've helped everybody else's place feel personal and special. You know, my son's room, the Holy Grail, all these places is, is you've made it to where we have something that's ours, that's super special, super unique, right. that, that we're very proud of. This, for me, feels right for you guys because it's like, this is you all's. And, and you know, going to your house before and seeing that, you're right, you guys live different. And, and it's, <laughs> but, it's, it's, but it's that cool, like that. I like living outside the box and, and so, while I see what you're saying about, you know, you didn't see this, but in the same breath, I can totally see it. And this right. totally makes sense for you guys because now you have giant walls to put your murals. Like, this is yours, and you get to make it yours. Absolutely. And we get to be a part of it and share in that. And it's, it's really neat from the outside as somebody who knows you and knows your family and, and what you guys do and how you've always helped other people and fulfill our dreams. It's cool to get to see you guys working on yours. And, and, to, to, to see you have a canvas that's yours and to, to make it yours is, is just really neat to me. And, and again, congratulations to you all both. What is kind of your goals with this place? You know, I know you mentioned, uh, you know, parties and stuff like that. Where do you hope this thing leads and what do you really hope that it brings to Victoria? Well, I, I think, first of all, we want to be able to just give some people something fun to do during the weekdays. Mm -hmm. uh, we're really still working out the hours right now, but it's going to be primarily more in the evening. Uh, again, a little warmer in here. Um, but we got fans going, uh, a nice breeze through here. I mean, more, it's just South Texas hot. Yeah, There's not much you can do about that, and, you know, yeah. until it cools down. You wear a t-shirt, wear some shorts and tennis shoes, and you'll be Which good you to go. Which you guys do have good shirts for selling some cool hats. <laughs> this just is true. Quick little Thanks plug so right there. I, I, I like the shirts. So I had to point it out, but <laughs> go ahead, sir. No, yes. Uh, but so uh, primarily that, but more importantly, team building. You know, I, I think with, with the company that I work for, uh, Momentum, they're very gracious and and uh, loaning and, and donating a, for, a scissor lift that I'm able to get up to these heights. Uh, I want to give back and, and, and provide an area and of opportunity for people to come here, such as your team, to just release all the stress of the day or, or uh, perfect that perfect throw, which I'm sure mm -hmm. we're all going to be thinking about later. Um, uh, and then, you know, as we continue to grow, I mean, there's bigger plans, but like anything else, we need to walk before we run. And, and I think just that and creating a place like you talked about, something that I can express fully kind of my thought process of how I'd like to, to decorate or create these nice murals. And I mean, at the end of the day, when we're all said and done, every lane's going to be painted on the walls. 
And then maybe this could be a destination point for uh, an art walk where, where it can be an axe throwing art installation of its own self. Um, and what was, and not to cut you off, but something else that I thought was cool that you guys are really pushing for mm -hmm. is this is not just for adults. Is, you know, you guys have kids and, and, and your kids are part of that backyard mm -hmm. fun about there throwing those axes and, and, and stuff like that. And so you guys also wanted to provide a safe place right. for the kids to come in. And kind of what age range are you guys thinking on that? And, and what was kind of your thoughts on, on making sure they had some place too? Well, we're starting at 10. Okay. Um, that's usually the expected age for most places. Um, I know that there are some that go a little bit younger, but I think for, if we're doing parties and stuff like that, um, we pre we appreciate you know reservations and a book ahead of time. If we know it's parties, then we will allocate uh, specific people to for safety wise for the kids. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know that I know that I've, a lot of kids are really into it yet, but um, I imagine... I don't think there will be many kids that are opposed to throwing axes at <laughs> their walls. I know if somebody to me as a kid said, hey, do you want to throw an axe? Yes, yes. I, I would okay. love that. Absolutely. Okay. And, and, so I think you'll be fine. And that's the great thing about it. It's not the kids are doing something, the adults mm -hmm. are doing something. You're actually doing it together. So you're teaching as, as well as having fun while doing it. Right. And then kind of like creating that extra special bond yeah. of uh, not just playing some video games or playing skee-ball. You know, this is serious stuff, but you I get like to do it together. I like the physical aspect of it yeah. because it's, it's a lot of walking. If you're doing a tournament mm -hmm. and you're walking back and forth, like a, um, within you, an hour, you get so like many steps in. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the World uh, Axe Throwing League tournaments that are on ESPN, um, the guy's training for it. He said he walked like three miles. Like, you know, just training for it in a day. And you don't realize it because, you know, you take a few steps here, pick up an axe, walk back. But if you're here um, every day, that's, you know, I'm a nurse too by trade and I'm actually a nurse practitioner now. And so, well, that's kind of why, you know, we've always been so busy and not had time to do things. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so health is very important to where, to me and to where we work. And, um, so and I, I think that, you know, getting that 30 minutes of physical exercise mm -hmm. in or for some people walking is hard, but, mm -hmm. you know, walking while you're playing a game doesn't seem like that much. No, so. but it, but but it, there is a physicality to it. Right. And there, you know, just in the, the, the throws we made and, and, mm -hmm. and rushing through them for the show and even in like that, you know, I, I think I mentioned to you, I, 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 I feel it. You know, I'm not tired. I can't not pick it up. Right. But you do feel the fatigue. You do feel the steps. You do feel the heat. You feel all those things. And and. It, it comes together and it beats sitting on the couch. You know, For you're sure. moving and your your body's at motion and 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 all of that and and you just you're burning calories just standing there and, exactly. and your point on thinking about the throats and stuff is spot on because you know when we were going through the initial camp and I was man I was hitting those things spot on. As soon as we turned on the cameras and I started thinking about <laughs> it, I hit the thing thing and I think, and so even as you're sitting here talking, I'm like. If I would have just did one foot to the left and thrown it, like I could have hit. I need to go back and try that again, you know. And and that that competitive little fire. And to me, that's that's the goal is when you just have to provide the place and right. and the, the the sport and the fun makes me want to do it all on my own. Like I want to go back and throw that thing because I biffed up those last five throws <laughs> and I need to do over it. And and I have to be better than my wife when she comes up here. So Very you know, I, maybe some private lessons. Something, but um, guys, what am I forgetting? How can people? Um, you guys are on Facebook, Instagram, all that. Where do they find you? I know, you know, this is, we're filming now. This is going to air on Friday. How do they find you? How do they set up a, to bring in their work groups? Are you guys letting them set that yet? Or, or how are we doing the, the um, reservations and stuff? So uh, we have a phone number. Our Facebook page is the Axe Society of Victoria, Texas. Um, okay. And if you search that up, it should come up right away. And we okay. allow a book. Um, a book appointment feature so that you can make reservations. Okay. Um, at this time, we're preferring to make reservations because we have we do have a people limit about how many we can have mm -hmm. um, in the building. So if you book ahead, then we can know and um, and you secure um, your lanes for that day and for whatever hours you want to be in. Um, and BYOB. B BYOB. Okay. Um, uh, with beer that? and wine, no heavy spirits, okay. uh, no heavy liquor. Okay. But, you can bring some food. Yeah, but you okay. bring your own food, yep. or you can have the apps deliver here. Um, What's and the take, minimum? Like, say, you know, say my my mother took my son and mm -hmm. and my wife and I wanted to have date night. You know, are we able to to, to book? How does that? Is, can you book a minimum of two for date night? Something? Absolutely. For the bigger groups, like we talked about mm -hmm. earlier, we'll put in the double lanes, but we'll have a double lane for for more individual walk-ins. So maybe you and your wife will be thrown on one lane, and another couple or gotcha. somebody will be thrown on this lane, and. There'll be more than enough, obviously, when people are thrown in one lane, but that's where the communal aspect comes in, right? Now you're introducing yourself to these new people, and, 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 and there's a competition among strangers, mm -hmm. and hopefully by the end of the day, people are landing axes, you had a great time, and you met some new people. For Man, sure. I like it. Am I forgetting anything, guys? Anything we need to hit? Uh, well, again, like anything else, 
it's always about the journey, uh, not the destination. So this is a small step into hopefully something great that we can, can, can come up with, that we can provide for the town, that, that people can grow with us. I mean, we're hoping in, in time having tournaments with, with really cool trophy belts. Uh, and and, and that, that's it as of right now. I mean, again, we're readily available through online email, phone number, text. Uh, and we're pretty open. If we'll try to get to let you know as far as availability, try to get you in. And again, we have lane coaches here. We're not going to let you go wild west. Mm -hmm. There's going to be people floating back and forth. Not necessarily... Getting, All up in your business, yeah, but, but, but there and keeping you safe. We're here to keep you safe, and we want to make you land bullseye. So yep. if we can put our two bits in where you can land them, we're definitely going to do that. And uh, I think it goes without showing at this moment, right now, we are the number one axe throwing league <laughs> in Victoria, Texas. God Book bless it. you. I agree. And, and guys, well done. Well done. And, Thank and thanks for having me in. I, I appreciate the passion you guys put to this. And, and thanks for your friendship over the years as well. And, and again, my son has the coolest room in Victoria, I would argue, against anybody awesome, because awesome. of your hard work. And I had the coolest bathroom and an office in Victoria. So thank yes, you sir. for that, my friend. Guys, make sure you come and check them out. The Axe Society. Book your appointment. Book your office party. Book your date night. Whatever it is, get up here. Let them take care of you. Have fun. Um, if you need to book an individual to come up here so you can beat your wife and act like you've never done this before but win, he'll yep. help you out. Um, don't let my wife see this part. Um, anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. We will catch you at the next one. See you later, Victoria. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to meet Victoria with Caleb Shaw. If you haven't done so already, make sure you comment below, share the videos, it really helps the algorithms. Also, make sure you like the page, follow the page. And if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also, if you wanna be featured on Meet Victoria, shoot us a message, we'd love to hear from you. And finally, make sure you support our great sponsors. We could not do this without them and we're grateful and blessed to have them. Thanks so much for tuning in and we will see you at the next one.